uh, sheet there. We're going to go through this because this, you're going to do some serious cleaning here. So don't get any idea that you can just blow through this and everything. Yeah, because it won't. Because you're going to work into this. This is charts, okay? Now, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about shift solenoid, right? Yeah. Okay, shift solenoid. Typically, <laughs> the shift solenoids aren't exactly the same on every vehicle, but, you know, this is sort of general principles right here. You know, it's got a solenoid here with a winding and a plunger, and whenever you've got the fluid going in there, you got an electrical connector, exhaust to the sump, and all that line pressure. So when a shift solenoid is energized, it exhausts the pressure being sent to the shift valve. So that means the shift valve, like right down here, see your, see your one, two shift from your two, three shuttle on that 4L60E, basically, what that's going to do, the valve blocks the port, prevents pressure from being routed to the clutch of the man. See, the shift valve is actually moved by a spring. The spring is overcome by the pressure that's going through this valve here. And so whenever the shift valve turns on, it allows it to move, you know, it's going to cause it to go to the next gear or whatever. Okay, number one, shift solenoid E is on in which gears? Study the chart, give me your answer. Six. And <laughs> you're supposed to write them down. Nine. <laughs> oh, that's what you're supposed to put them here. Yeah, I didn't even notice we was taking the test yet. No, no, uh, this is a test. One, which, which this one? whole presentation is a test. All right. Solenoid E is you know, on in which gear? This right here is going to work you over. And, uh, and, and, and Mr. Z over there, he needs this pretty bad. So that's a written test? This is a written test. Okay. Yeah, I'm finna fail this. You right. Right. Well, why are you speaking that on yourself, man? Yeah, right. cause I know. Which solenoids are on in third gear? Which solenoids are on in third gear? You better tighten up because it gets harder. Okay? You're going to be beating your head against the wall here in a minute. I don't know the meaning of the word hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Improvise, adapt, and over. Yeah, Zach, Zach snaps that old bumper back together out there yesterday, a little plastic okay. jump, and he goes, ha, look at that, I did that. Leave and then he stands up, and about the time he stands up, he goes, poof, it pops hey, back man. apart. <laughs> right. So, a customer says this vehicle doesn't shift. Road testing, you find the vehicle only has a second and third. Only has second and third gear. What may have caused this symptom? Here's your four choices. SSA always on, SSB always on, SSA always off, or SSB always off. And you got to remember, when it's in first gear, SSA is on and SSB is off. When it's in second gear, both these solenoids are off. When it's in third gear, this one's off and that one's on. And when it's in fourth gear, they're both on. Hello. could cause it to only have second and third gear. Look at these and think about it. And there's your four choices right there. Everybody ready to move on? Alright. Hold on, do we just put A, B, or C or yeah, well, you're going to, you know, just write down your answer in there. But you could put A, B, or C, because we're going to go back and look at the answers in a minute. There are only ten questions here. Right, uh, but they are meat grinders. Or a lot of them are. Yeah. A customer complains that his vehicle is missing or skipping shifts. A road test verifies the vehicle only shifts from third to fourth. What may have caused this symptom? So, again, it only has third and fourth gear? Yep. Whenever you put it in gear, it takes off in third and shifts to fourth. That's all you got. After you get up to a certain speed, it shifts to fourth. So this is a clean What may have caused this symptom? Mm -hmm. This is the same vehicle. I mean, the same kind of vehicle. Right? SSA always on, SSB always on, SSA always off, or SSB always off. This is the stuff you need to know how to sort out if you're troubleshooting a transmission problem. And you know, this business of getting one that's giving trouble and just tearing into it and hoping you see something, not a good plan. You got me? But, so you're basically doing the same thing that this one here is. It's, this is the same it. one, but it's got a different symptom. Mm -hmm. 
only shifts, in other words, it takes off in third and shifts to fourth. It's like it doesn't even have reverse person. Well, it doesn't say that it doesn't have reverse. It's got reverse. And it takes off in third. Yeah. Now this one right here is kind of tricky. And um, whenever we were, me and Adam were putting our heads together on this one here this morning. And uh, well, we may argue about that one a little bit because you do have reverse and that's easy to forget. And when we put the answer key together, we may not have considered that. But it's fun to do this anyway. If shift solenoid C fails off, which gears would be available? Reverse first, second, third. Reverse first, third, and fourth. Second, fifth. Reverse first, third, and fifth. The customer says this transmission is missing shifts. Road test is shifts from first to third and then neutralizes when shifting to fourth. Which component is likely to be the cause of this concern? A, forward clutch, B, low one-way clutch, which would be your sprag, and intermediate overdrive band or low reverse clutch. See, we're getting away from solenoids here and looking at clutch and band application chart. And there's your reverse, reverse first, second, third, and fourth. Remember what happens. It shifts from first to third and then neutralizes when it shifts to fourth. Says this transmission is harsh engagement, and I should have put has harsh engagement. Road test verifies a harsh shift between second and third. Which component is likely to be the cause of this concern? Forward clutch, direct clutch, intermediate overdrive band, or low one way clutch? You know the sprag that's got the little uh, rollers or bow ties in it that will only turn one way? And they found it's all about a one way clutch. That's what they're doing. Everybody ready? You feel like you've been smacked around on this test here? Yeah, it's not that bad, is it? After you get used to looking at these charts, it's not so terrible. So your assignment for the weekend is to dig into this really deep and do all of your electives and automatic transmissions. Midterms are coming up. The tubes. Yep. When is it? Hmm? When is midterms? Uh, I'm supposed to put the. I'm gonna be putting the grades in on Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. And elect is gonna determine what your grade is. Okay. Oh. All right. So this customer complains of no reverse and says the transmission neutralizes when it shifts to third and never achieves fourth.
What do you think? You know, right now, what do you think? Those A's mean that applied. Yeah. It doesn't mean absence. This is what you, this is basically what you want your uh, midterm to look like. A, 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 which is applied, applied, that means you applied yourself. I always get to see you see me after class. Here we got E. That's for effort. Yeah. Either that or. The word F starts with an E, so that would be E and F would probably be the same thing. I don't do me off. My teacher handed me a paper and said E on it. Is that an E or a... No, E stands for epic fail, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. This customer complains the transmission neutralizes when making a sharp turn. Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah. You'd be surprised how often you'll see that. And by neutralizing, it won't. Neutralizing means it just drops out. Like, you know. It either just revs up like you put it in neutral, even though you didn't. So like or, overdrive. Huh? It's like overdrive. No. It acts like you put it in neutral. It ain't pulling no more. It quits pulling. But it's revving up like it's in overdrive. No, overdrive don't rev up. Overdrive goes down. You can do that. Start getting that back. Start getting that back. We're gonna find out what these answers are in the next. Back in the next. If the shift solenoid A fails only, which gears would be available? Shift solenoid A. If it fails only, which gears would be available? If it's on all the time, all gears except four and fifth, reverse first, third, and fourth, second, fifth, reverse first, third, and fifth. Oh, I got that one wrong last time. Messed up. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, hey, we know you got it wrong. Just Trade papers. Now, when we talk about these, we may even decide that I got one or two of them wrong. Okay? No, not you. Absolutely. Occasionally, on an ASC test, I will miss a poorly written question. Okay? It's not your fault. It's the question's fault. It's got. It's exactly. Which just solenoid E is on, and which gears? Fourth and sixth. Got it? Shift solenoid. Which, which solenoids are on in third gear? A and B. Huh? Shift solenoid A and B. Yeah, there you go. That's good. The customer says this vehicle doesn't shift. Okay, SSA always off. Let's talk about that one for a minute. It's supposed to be on. I know, but if it's always off, what are you going to get? Look, if it's always off, that'll be like second, right? Mm -hmm. If it's always off and this turns on, this is the only two gears you'll have, right? Because yep. if this one's always off. Get that one right? I switched I my know. answer too. You got it right the first time and switched your answer. Learn from that. Okay. Well, I knew it should have been on, but... A I'm customer complains his vehicle is missing or skipping shifts. Well, let's see if I got this one right. What do you think? Let's talk about that for a minute. If SSB was always on, if it was only in third and fourth, right? If it was always on, see, these right here are never supposed to be on unless you're in third and fourth. And if they're on all the time, right? Whatever's going on over here, your subject only have third and fourth. You got that? That makes sense? So there would have to be that, don't you think? You get that? If shift solenoid C fails off, which gears would be available? Reverse, first, third, fourth. Get that one right. If it failed off, shift solenoid C, it's off. 
All right. So you're not going to have second, and you're not going to have fifth because it fell off, and it's going to turn on before you do that. And you know, I've always said this before. I've always had the idea when I first started seeing transmission solenoids way back in the day. I was thinking, okay, the shift solenoid A or one, if you want to call it that. Sometimes it'll be SS one, two, three, or four. Sometimes it'll be SS A, B, C, and D, but it's the same deal. I said, so shift solenoid A will come on, and then you'll shift into second gear. Shift solenoid B will come on, and then you shift. Nah, that ain't the way it works. They're all over the map, man. They're everywhere. They just it's like almost like random on you. You know, and I had to actually take the ones and draw little charts and all so I could keep, I drew my own charts to whether we'd have the equipment at the Ford place where you'd plug in and you'd see the lights light up and the solenoid was on. <laughs> and I'd have in this gear and then that one and this was supposed to be like that. But anyway, uh, the customer says, this transmission is missing shifts, road test three from first to third, and then neutralizes and shifts to the fourth. Intermediate overdrive band. See this? First to third, it never hits second. And when it shifts to fourth, see, that, that's supposed to be applied in second and fourth. So it jumps over second, and it never hits fourth. I mean, it neutralizes when it hits fourth. So that's giving you an intermediate overdrive band. I won't say that. You, know. you got that? You get that right? Customer says this transmission has harsh engagement. Now, is releasing a band going to cause harsh engagement? Not really. I mean, you're basically going to be looking at an application of your direct clutch. Now, what's going to make it have harsh engagement? Because of the direct, if the direct clutch is supposed to apply. <coughs> if those clutches are worn out? They... No, that won't make it harsh engagement. That'll make it slip. What you're going to have is there's an accumulator, which is basically a piston with a spring behind it. When it fills up the direct clutch to apply the piston, it's supposed to fill up that accumulator first to squeeze the spring and soften the application. If you got a broke spring, so that accumulator is always bottomed out, you know, it'll do that. Basically. Also, when you're putting a shift kit in one, a lot of times they'll have you put a softer spring in there behind one of the accumulators and drill out some holes to shoot the fluid through there quicker so it'll apply more firmly. You know what I mean? I mean, I'd rather have mine to apply firm than soft because when it applies soft, you got more of a propensity to slip the, slip the clutches. You know, that's just, you know, I don't know. All right, so customer complains of no reverse and says the transmission neutralizes when it shifts to third and never achieves fourth. Front clutch. You got that? No reverse. If this is not applying, you won't have reverse. And that's a really good thing there. I mean, you won't have, there's Gene. You won't have, uh, it neutralizes at third and it never gets fast enough to go into fourth. And even if it did, it wouldn't have anything anyway, right? So when it neutralizes, that's like it falls out of gear. Oh, you know, and you're getting nothing going on there. So what'd you write down there? I don't want to answer. Um, hey. I wrote front clutch. Front clutch, good deal. On uh, fourth gear, mm -hmm. you know, where it's, you know, every, in every other gear, the direct, the direct clutch and one way clutch are all applied. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why is it applied in that fourth one? Because that's the, um, mm -hmm. so why is it not applied in fourth one? Well, it's, uh, this is a, basically a particular transmission, and it'll actually, because of the way that these things are splined into the planetaries, you know, they'll have it when it's not applied that way. All right. Now this one here, low on fluid. When you go around a curve, and I have one of them where somebody, when they have service in two transmissions, they pick up the wrong dipstick, and the dipstick will be longer, and it'll look like it's full. So what, it'll oh, look like it's good. full, but it won't be full. And when you swing around a curve, the fluid sloshes away from the right. filter pickup, and it neutralizes for a second, and it catches again. So if you see one that's doing that when you go around a curve, just dump another quart of fluid in it and see if it gets better. Mm. That way you know you got a wrong dipstick. That ain't really complicated. I this real quick. <laughs> uh, all right, if shift solenoid A fails on, which gears would be available? If shift solenoid A fails on, which gears would be available? All gears all, right? except fourth and fifth. You got that one, right? Shift solenoid A fails on. See? You got all, it's on on all those, so... And you see how you can track down what's going on? If you can go in there and look at your clutch and band application chart, your solenoids and all this stuff, and I also told you too, it's a good idea to put the solenoids on it if you're doing an overhaul on one. Just go ahead and put new solenoids on it because a lot of times you'll make yourself work having to go back in there if you didn't do that. You know, we ran into that here trying to save somebody money. 
the pull the transmission of the X4 in apart and do everything right and put it all back together and the stupid thing don't work right until you go in there and put all the solenoids in it, which is what you should have done the first time you went in there. And putting the solenoids in one of those is not for the faint hearted because you pull the transmission out and to put them in there. There's nothing easy about it. So, anyway, um, all that. So, what do you know? What do you know now? Do you, you feel more comfortable with reading these things? I still, yeah, I, I still got to go over the Still yeah. Uh, well, you still got all those electrical yeah. things you still got to do too, so. Yeah. All right. So that ought to get you took care of. Yay! Right. There's a pizza out there on the table. You all need to eat it. Yeah. Don't tell. Me. Oh, I know. That, I know that sounds harsh, but you all need to eat that. Pizza. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to tell me.